Hello everyone. Welcome to Summer Art Camp at Walker's Point Center for the Arts. Um, my name is Cindy and I am the program coordinator here at Walker's Point Center for the Arts. I was asked by Oscar to lead an activity and the activity I'm going to be leading with you all is going to be making your own labyrinth. Before I get started on how to create the labyrinth, um, some things to know is that a maze and a labyrinth are two different things. So a maze will have one point where you enter and one point where you exit. And you have to go through this weaving of different obstacles where you might hit some dead ends, you might end up at the same point you started, but you have to figure out how to get to the end. A labyrinth, on the other hand, has one point that is the entrance and the exit. So you have to weave your way through this and it tells you exactly where you need to go. You follow your finger on the same spot or you walk through that same spot following the only path that you can go. And when you get to the end, it's going to be actually in the middle. So then once you hit that dead end, what you will do is you'll turn around and you have to go all the way back to exit the labyrinth. Now, for my labyrinth, I based mine off of a flower. And it's really neat because for this labyrinth, I can use my finger to trace through it. And it's really nice and relaxing. The reason why I like to make labyrinths is because it helps um, calm me down. So if I'm feeling like I'm getting upset, maybe I'm getting stressed, all I have to do is use this and go through it all the way to that end point and turn back around. And the more I repeat this, the calmer I feel. Now, I even feel myself getting calm as I'm doing this right here. Um, so, I'm going to bring this closer to you. Like I said, there's one point that is the entrance and the exit. So you'd have to go all the way through this to get to that middle point. And at that middle point is where you're going to turn around and go all the way back. The way I learned about labyrinths is because of um, a dear friend of mine, Leah Denny who actually does a lot of really cool work about how is it you can make your brain healthier. Um, and she taught me about labyrinths. And what I learned from her is that the more you do practices like this, um, like creating labyrinths and working through them, the healthier your brain's gonna be because it makes both, of your, both sides of your brain work together. So people who like to do tapping, or people who like to go running. Um, it helps their brains too because it makes both sides of their body work together. And when you have both sides of your body work together, it makes your brain stronger and happier and healthier. So, they can be, for our labyrinths, um, something cool to think about is they can be as small as, say, your hand or they can be as large as a city block. So there are some labyrinths that you can travel to and you can walk through them. Um, they may be, you know, you may not see the path as you're going. There may be a chance that there's big plants that are guiding you along the way. Sometimes they just have rocks along your, your path. So then you have to walk and make sure you're watching where you're walking so you don't cross over the wall of the labyrinth. So, um, for our small labyrinths, the supplies that you're gonna need are modeling clay, water. We are going to need a sketchbook to sketch out our ideas. We will need a pencil. Um, you are also gonna need a paintbrush. You may actually use the brush itself, but we are specifically gonna need the backside of the paintbrush for this. 
And then the optional supplies for today's activity are going to include some acrylic uh, paints. And here is what we are going to be working on making today. So this is a labyrinth. So for the first step of labyrinth, what you're gonna do is you're going to draw a line right down the middle of your paper. You can do it long ways or you can do it um, short ways. I'm gonna do it long ways here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. What we are working on is having symmetry. Now, I'm just gonna draw a little rough um, leaf and that's gonna be the kind of outline of where I want all my lines to go. So, how I'm gonna start this off is now I'm gonna make a nice dark line and start trying to make sure that everything I do on this side is gonna happen on this side. So, and I'm going to freehand this. So now what I'm going to do is see if I like the feel of this. I'm going to use the back of the pencil and trace around this. Notice I'm following slowly to keep my um, paintbrush, the handle of it on the line the whole time. This is gonna be really important so then when you make it, you know if you're gonna like the feeling of it. After you've completed it, you go all the way back. The other thing that you should have for this activity is a piece of scrap cardboard or some um, scrap cardboard or paper. Newspaper would work um, because the back side is going to use that to keep it from sticking to tables. So I've split my clay up into two pieces. One of them meant Open it up a little bit. Oh, here we go. Put some water on it here. And then start kneading it. Now, flatten it out. A little bit of the... And then a little more water here. Start moving this together. Make sure that you're keeping your uh, workstation covered so you don't get your parents' um, table or uh, 
floor or whatever space you're working on messy. So see how it's becoming more elastic, more stretchy. You wanna keep this up until the color is blended into your clay. Like I said, this is an optional step. And now I'm gonna start pushing this out. So now, I'm gonna use this and start lightly drawing. Quick little dotting motion with that. I'm gonna start off with a smaller one. So now, you can see that this is We've got this whole line across here. So next, you're gonna use the tip of the pencil here. And you're just gonna push gently to try smoothing out those edges. Paintbrush, you can use the paintbrush to just smooth out with some water.
I'm gonna just wait for this to dry. 